Our first question is from, it's kind of a combo question from a lot of people, from Kristen, from Crystal, Sarah, Tessa, Vanessa, Laleen, Mai, and Jeline. They all wanna know, how do you decide when it's the right time to do a movie or sequel? And what made you choose to send Candace to space and to make her the main character instead of Phineas and Ferb? The first part's easy. The decision was made when Disney called us and said, would you like to make a movie? Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we went, hmm, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, when they called me and said, do you want to make a movie? And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. So that's when you decide it. it's the right time, when somebody asks you to do it. The, um, uh, we, we decided to have Candace be the main character for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one was that we were trying to come up with a new story we hadn't told in 222 episodes of, of, of the series. And, and there weren't many of them. Yeah, and there weren't many left. So we said, well, well, what if we have a story where the boys are motivated to, into the story by Jeopardy? What, by, you know, let's, let's get somebody in some sort of danger and they have to go rescue. Let's have Candace get, get kidnapped by aliens and they have to go and rescue her. And that's the driving force of the, of, of the, of the movie. And that felt like a story we really hadn't told. Phineas and Ferb's usually just sort of a celebration. It's all driven by them having fun. And this way, we, we had it start a different way, but we still wanted to keep fun going while still having Jeopardy. And uh, it, it, was a, it was sort of a tightrope wire, but- Mostly, we just, we just wanted to change it up to make it more difficult for Vincent to do his job because he'd gotten pretty used to what we were doing. Yeah. And now it's different. So. We like to throw a curveball every once in a while. And uh, and also, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the audience that uh, that used to be Phineas and Ferb's age is now closer to Candace's age or or over, and uh, and it sort of uh, it felt like it was her time. Plus, Ashley's a spe spectacular voice actress, and we wanted to give her a chance to shine. Perfect. This question's for Vincent. How um, and it's from Tessa Smith. How did it feel to get to voice Phineas again? It was awesome getting to, uh, to spend more time with Phineas. I mean, I've spent 10 years playing Phineas on the series and doing the various hour long specials that we did and the video games and everything. And I mean, this has been the most significant thing that I've ever done career wise in my life. And this world and this character means so much to me. It was really, really fun when I heard we were gonna get to, uh, to do this movie. I mean, Phineas is so full of energy and full of excitement and just wants to make every day so great and have the best time. And that's a really fun personality and energy to get to spend time with in the booth. And that's a really fun um, time. The, the 10 years that I've had with it, every single time was a, was a really great time. And uh, all of these episodes that we've done and now the movie are all their own amazing unique adventures. And so uh, there's always something to look forward to at the end of you know, the, the length of time that it takes to make something like this. In this case, this was two years. So it's, it's always worth that wait. Perfect. All right. So this question is from Marissa and Shannon for Plies. And I apologize if I butcher anyone's names. Uh, Phineas and Ferb first aired over a decade ago on Disney Channel. What do you think makes the show so timeless or nostalgic? And what kind of original storylines and catchphrases from the show can we look forward to seeing in the new movie? Well, I, I think that the reason that the show has sort of proved to be timeless is that it's just such a, uh, the, 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 the main thrust of the show is it's a celebration of creativity and imagination. And I think that those things never really go out of style. So I, so, so I think that, that that's what's kept it relevant all these years is that, that it's, it's celebrating sort of what is best about being a human being, I think. Um, as far as the, the, you know, we tried to hit on a lot of the catchphrases and a lot of the, uh, um, the running gags uh, from, uh, from the show in the movie, uh, as long as it didn't slow, slow things down, we would, we would put in references to stuff. And th so there's a lot of Easter eggs for, for people. Um, I think that the, uh, the sound people make while they're exploding may end up being a catchphrase at some point. <laughs> so we have these aliens that explode from the waist up if they get too excited and it makes a very specific sound for those of you who've seen the movie. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's the thing, if I was watching it, that's the thing I would start repeating to people you know, on the playground. 
I think one of the things that kept it um, relevant for people for so long too is that it was absolutely family viewing. We, we never neglected the parents or the older people in the room, but we tried to do it without, without alienating the younger people. And we've always said, you know, don't, don't underestimate uh, the intelligence of the kids. Um, they're much smarter than you think. And I think that creates a show that they can watch over and over again and, and they can watch with their whole family and there's something in there for everyone. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I mean, I, I grew up with the show and a lot of people I know grew up with the show. And so it's, <clears throat> it's it, you know, at the start of it, it would have been a gigantic surprise had anyone said, you know, this would have been so important to a generation of people. But then working on it and seeing what, you know, obviously Swampy and Dan have done, but let alone all of our writers with, um, with the music and with these stories and with the humor. Um, it just makes me so happy, um, even seeing a lot of the people here today, you know, it's, it's parents with their kids and everyone's equally as excited about this experience. And that's what's always really amazing about Phineas and Ferb fans is it's, it's usually people of all ages. Great, so the next question is from Christy Mehes. Do parents and their children need to be familiar with the series or, or Phineas and Ferb the movie across the second dimension in order to understand Phineas and Ferb the movie, Candace Against the Universe? Well, I can highly suggest that you watch the entire series, have a big giant stream of everything first, because you'll get some bonuses, but it's not required. Yes, we, we made we can, sure that, the, that yes. the movie could be a starting point for, for people who had never seen the series, because you know there's a whole generation of kids uh, growing up now who are the, the right age for this show that didn't grow up with this show on TV all the time. So we wanted to make sure that it was a good entry point. We didn't yeah, nail although, it. Uh, kids who weren't born yet, it's sort of like a baby Mozart thing, is like when people are gonna have kids, they play Phineas and Ferb music. It apparently makes them smarter, smarter as they- Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we can, we can definitely advise watching and listening to Phineas and Ferb. Yes, yeah. Early. It's, Early. It's, there's, a, there's a study that was done at the University <laughs> of Dan and Swampy about that. University of Danville. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, the next question is from Sarah Gilliland. It is, what was it like to get the original cast back together again to revisit these characters and their stories? It was like going uh, back for a, for a reunion. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's all these people that we spent 10 years with. And then, you know, we see them periodically, you know, a, a, a lot of them, but, uh, uh, but it was great to just get back together and do the thing that we that we used to do together it's uh it's been just a joy you know every time we have somebody new come into the studio there's like oh hey bobby's back or you know ashley's back that was it was just so much fun it was a, it was a, it was a great time it wasn't so exciting to see vincent again because we're friends with him so yeah, we see him we know everything time. he's doing. We talk to him all the time. We know. Yeah. Him much. As a matter of fact, they've seen me too much. Um, yes. They. <laughs> they're like, yeah, when you come into the studio, just wear a bag or something. Yes. We don't need to see we're, you we're anymore. We're actually seeking a restraining order against yeah. them because no more seeing you. <laughs> Everyone yeah. else, it's a reunion. But exactly. Get out of our lives. It's we been started just very record, long. recording him like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, the next question is from Crystal Everdeen. If you could go on any adventure with Phineas and Ferb, what would it be? Ooh. Ooh, I sure like the space adventures that we've uh, that we've done. We've sent them into space a couple of times and uh, not never as far as this one, I think, but uh, but you know, uh, that sounds like fun to me exploring out in the in the gray beyond. I love the idea of chasing the sun around. Yes. Uh, that would be epic. Yes. Yeah, we, we, did, <laughs> we did an episode where they tried to make the longest day by, by circling the globe at the same speed as the sun. That's, and, what I was, uh, that's what I was going for, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You can come with us. All right, I'll be there too. Okay. <laughs> Great, the next question is from Sarah Lemp's son, Taylor, who's age 12. Will Phineas and Ferb's mom ever actually finally see one of their inventions? And how do you think she would actually react? Um, <laughs> well, you know, she does in, uh, in uh, Quantum Boogaloo 
the episode Quantum Boogaloo, but but the but everybody's grown up, so it's sort of a hollow victory for uh, for uh, for Candace. Um, I think that the reaction that we did in the episode that turned out all to be Candace's dream inside of Perry's dream uh, may be a little intense for mom, but she would be really shocked if she found out that everything that Candace has been telling her is all true all summer, I think. And mom's a pretty good mom. I think she would be equal parts impressed with her kids' creativity and ingenuity. Yes. As well as also being aware that this might not be the smartest or safest thing to do in the backyard. <laughs> um, but mom's pretty good in understanding and I, I think she loves the creativity of her kids. So it would be a, a difficult call. It's like, this is, this is really amazing and totally impressive, but probably something you shouldn't be doing here. Yes. <laughs> and, and also uh, she technically saw one of our amazing, it wasn't an invention, but achievements in do we're getting the band back together when we got a love handle back. That's right. So she technically did also see that occur, and she seemed pretty cool with that. So yeah, you may not have realized that the boys set that all up. Exactly. But uh, but, but she did see it, and it was impressive. Great. The next question is from Lynette Fernandez. It's nice that Candace finally has a breakthrough about her relationship with her brothers. Is that the point of this film, or is there another message you're trying to convey? Uh, I think that's the main, that's the emotional message of, of the film. And, and when we were making the movie, we, we you know, because there's other parts of the story and we originally had them getting back together too early and realized that, that as soon as they get back together, the story that we're interested in, which is the emotional story between those characters, is over. And we had them getting back together too early and then Candace was ganging up with them to help say, save the world afterward. And so, so it sort of felt like the, the story was over and then we had like another 35 minutes of, uh, of, of movie with, with another story. And, and so the more we, fit, we juggled things around till that moment could happen later, the better the movie felt. Uh, because I think that's what the movie really ends up being about is, is Candace's relationship with her brothers. And we, we, that's we what we like. That. Our favorite moments tend to be when, when, I mean, we understand what their relationship is, but when you, when you remind people that they're siblings who love each other very much and you have those emotional connections, it's really satisfying. Because I think we're all like that to some degree with our siblings. Sure, they drive us crazy, but they're there for you. Yeah. Um, and those are really, really moments worth working for in storytelling. Yeah. Great. The next question is from Marissa and Shannon. What have been some of your favorite songs from the series, and will there be any songs like Gitchy Gitchy Goo or the Roller Coaster song that fans will remember and be singing for years to come that are in the new film? I think my favorite song is the Brick theme song. <laughs> I think it's really the most... It took as long to write as it did to sing. <laughs> it was... Uh... You know, uh, there's a lot of great songs that uh, that that I'm really proud of in the in in the series. Uh, I really like "Summer Belongs to You" from our first hour-long special. I think that's one of the best songs we've written. I think "Carpe Diem" is one of the best songs we've written. I think the yes. finale song with, that uh, the that's called "Time Spent Slash Curtain Call" is uh, is is really you know that's a hard one for me to get through without. Yeah, that one's of... really sad. Yeah, and, I can't. Uh, yeah. That and the uh, uh, and then there's like like just fun boppy boppy songs like Gitchy Gitchy Goo and and uh, Come Home Perry is really good as well. Hands. Oh, Come Home Perry is lovely. Come Home Perry is great. That was uh, nominated for an Emmy. Um, yeah. It's uh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was nominated for an Emmy. Uh, it didn't win, like, which is why we never told you about it. I like yeah, you. Right. <laughs> had it had it won, you would have told me. I like you singing Kick It Up a Notch with Slash. On oh, the yes. That song yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Sang a song with Slash. Yeah. That was really cool. I will admit, even um, when we did uh, We're Back, which is the song that we just premiered. Yeah, which um, is in the, in the end credits. Which is in yeah. the end credits of the song. I mean, we recorded that um, pretty recently. Um, I yeah. think we can say that. Like, we recorded it during yeah. quarantine. So that yeah. came to me a lot later than the other music in the movie. And there's one song that like I, one of the near the end of the film songs that we have 
that I think is like, it's pretty up there in terms of Phineas. Right up there songs. with Summer Belongs to You, isn't it's it? It's really, really good. But also, it's, We're Back, I felt that way about where I was like, this is so remarkably catchy. Like, this is yeah. so, so catchy. I feel like people are going to want to sing it a lot. When I finally heard the, you know, the mix of it, when I got it back with like all of the music with it, yeah. and not just me singing it in my, you know, in my bedroom <laughs> and over my microphone. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I do think there's stuff in this movie that people are really going to like. Yeah. Yeah. Great. The next question is from Holly. Uh, where did you get the shape for Phineas's head? And how long is the animation process from original drawing to final animation? Right here. This. Phineas's head <laughs> shape was based on a, a real person. It's practically just a portrait. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I had, you know, I'd worked on a lot of shows at the time that were, you know, and, and usually you start with specific shape that everybody can draw to sort of build the build the head on. You know, Homer was a fire plug. Bart was a coffee can. You know, a lot of the old Looney Tunes was like an oval here and then two ovals here. Um, the uh, and I, and I was thinking nobody had ever really done a character whose head was based on a triangle. And so I I was just sketching out some stuff at a at a restaurant and. Uh, uh, and I came up with this triangle headed kid and that I just immediately fell in love with him. And I felt like this is the show that I would want to see. And, uh, and, and so, so that just happened. What was the other part of the question was, was how long it takes? Yes. How long from drawing to final animation? Uh, well, from the first drawing of Phineas to the final animation on the first episode was about 16 years. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but for one episode, when we start in the writer's room, it's about 10 months to, to finish one 11 minute episode. The and that's movie just because was, it takes me so many times to get it the way they like it. Yeah, that's a lot of takes. It's that's just like, like out, again. <laughs> yes, you went exactly. right this time, Vincent. Yeah, exactly. Again. You want a break? You want a break? You know, breaks are for winners. And uh, <laughs> you have a break in 10 months when you get it right. <laughs> Yes, exactly. No, it, it's like there's a lot to be done in an animated show. So, so it's 10 months for an 11 minute episode. The movie actually took us two and a half years. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a big, uh, tremendous labor inv involving lots and lots of uh, artists and, and editors and, and writers and uh, musicians. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a monumental feat to finish an animated film. Great. Next question is from Tanya. What Easter eggs can fans keep an eye out for in this new movie? Oh, we, we, I made a list at one point for, uh, for uh, somebody of all the Easter eggs in the movie. And it took, it, it was, <laughs> there was a whole bunch of, uh, of references. We tried to put as much in as we could where it, as long as it didn't s slow down the, uh, uh, the, the story at all. Uh, there's there's lots there's references from the very first musical number. There's uh, there's a there's a uh, some some backing vocalists that people will remember from a specific episode of or actually for two from two episodes of the series. There's callbacks to things that uh, that work. We always tr try to say as long as it works by itself, that's fine. As long as you don't have to have uh, have seen these episodes to enjoy this movie that that's fine but we tried to fill it with as many uh easter eggs as we could for the the real fans great the next question is from tessa smith what's your favorite invention that phineas and ferb have made over the years mm. I, yeah, that's a tough one i still go back to the roller coaster because that was sort of the most pure what would a nine-year-old boy make if he was un unhampered by budget or schedule or, you know, that was or, the, you know, that, reality? That was the first thing that Dan and I both, when we were brainstorming, thought, what would you do? It's like, oh, yeah, build a roller coaster in the backyard. Absolutely. Uh, and I've now seen on TikTok, <laughs> I've now seen three different roller coasters, two in the United States, one in... I. I think it's it's either Brazil or Argent Argentina or something like like that, where they've 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 hit me on the on uh, on their TikTok and they're building an actual roller coaster in their backyard and theming it around Perry the platypus, and that to me, that just sort of makes my life when I when I see people doing that and you know taking the time to make something that actually works 
and having their friends ride it and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's like well that's that's legacy that's uh, you know the, the the fact that these these twenty year olds are are now you know going to the trouble of doing the engineering and everything to make a roller coaster that goes you know that has a big drop and then you know like goes up a tree at the end so that it slides back down you know and uh, uh, one of them had hydraulic you know hydraulics that sent it off on its way it's like it's it's really spectacular I don't know how these kids learn to do this but uh, but it's spectacular. Go them. All right, the next question is from Vanessa Diaz. What is the message that you hope kids will take away from seeing this film? Um, go to space. No, I'm <laughs> you should go to if you should definitely go to space if you can. Yeah, yeah I think I think the message is really that uh, to to appreciate what it is you have. Um, and appreciate the people around you that love you, even if they're getting on your nerves. Yeah. I think it's, 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 if you're gonna coalesce it into, a, into an actual message, I think that would, that would be it. Great, the next question is from Crystal Everdeen. Will Phineas and Ferb ever discover Perry's secret identity? And if so, how would they react? Well, we actually did uh, the, the the movie we did for we the did channel. Do that our once, yeah. Movie, yeah. Uh, we we actually explored that, and then we of course had to erase their memory because it, you know it, we couldn't break the series. Uh, but uh, but um, Phineas was a little ticked off at first because he because because uh, he felt like, wait a minute, I, I, I thought we had this pet you know human relationship. Wait, were you ever our pet, or were we just a cover for you? He was—he was really sort of, uh, you know, angered by it. And it was one then of the first times that I was really upset in the in the series. Yeah, yeah. I was like yeah. Really, you know, angry yeah, and one sad. Of the rare times. Yes. And uh, I remember him yelling at uh, at uh, at Perry. You know, it's like, really, this is it. Is anybody anybody else here have a bizarre double life that they're hiding from me? And and Ferb put, slowly put his hand up behind him, and Phineas, down, without even Ferb. turning around, said, "Put your hand down, Ferb." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next question is from Tanya. Candace Against the Universe felt very sentimental. What are some of the best memories you have creating this film? You know, there were, just the fact that Swampy and I finally got to make a move, make our show together, it was was you know something that we had been trying to do for so long. So so to me, the roller coaster episode, the first thing that we did, it was really just him and me, and uh, and I you know I boarded it in vacation in France with my wife's family, where we would go out and do do day trips and then I'd come home and, and draw all night. And then on the way back, we stopped in the UK as, and stayed at Swampy's place. And he and I put all the storyboards out on his, his, uh, his kitchen table and uh, sent our wives to the museums, at, which I think they ended up going shopping instead. <laughs> yeah, probably fewer museums than shopping. And, uh, and we just like, like punched up all the gags and we're putting post-its here. And oh, if we do this, we move this to here. That to me was the 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 thing that I always remember as as sort of the the the, the most fun, and when we finally got Vincent Martella for for Phineas, that was the hardest casting we had in the entire show. There were the because it was so hard to find somebody who whose voice sounded optimistic and positive without sounding uh, either nerdy or false or arrogant and, or, or arrogant it was, it was like there's a very fine line there and we actually cast that twice with two, two other people and then put it together and found out it did not work and i think that, well, they, all, that they all had a lot of the reason accidents. the show yes yes <laughs> well they all no, but I think disappeared lot, we <laughs> promise not to talk about that yeah <laughs> I think a lot of the success on the, of the show rests on Vincent and Ashley's performances. I think that the, that they're that they're so good, and Vincent's voice makes him so likable from the very beginning. The first time kids see that voice, or see that character with that voice, he's a likable character. He's cool without being aloof. He's he's uh, smart without being nerdy. He's he's everything because of that. And then it and then Ashley playing off of that was fantastic. And it was that one line, aren't you a little young to be a roller coaster engineer? 
and yes, yes, I am can either sound like, yeah, jerk, of course I, or it can sound like, thank you. And yeah. since Reed made that so clearly sound like, thank you. Yeah. That that just, just like, oh yeah, okay, we're done. Well, thank you. That's very nice of both of you to say. I appreciate that. Uh, we didn't, we weren't going to tell him that, Dan. Why did we? Yeah. It's been, it's been over now 10 years. Now he's going to want more money for the sequel. Yes, it's, it's been over 10 years. <laughs> they never said something so nice about me. <laughs> well, we want to keep his head, head to a regular size. All right, the next question is from Sarah Lump's sister, Val, who happens to be a public school teacher. So when summer Excellent. vacation finally ends, will Phineas and Ferb be attending in-person school or doing virtual learning at home? First of all, well, thank you for being a teacher. My daughter's a teacher and that's just the coolest gig. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Um, well, well, we'll see. I don't know, that, you know, like if we were doing the series right now, we would probably do a bit about, uh, about quarantine. You know, I, I think that, that that would be uh, something that I'd like to explore what, what they would do during that time. I think hopefully by the time anything that we would make now would be done, hopefully quarantine will be over. That's like knock on wood. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but we did do an episode where everybody was sick and they did a Zoom call together. It was sort of before Zoom actually existed. But they, now they, everybody's they posting out. on social media like we're some sort of future prediction wizards. Yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I, I think it would be interesting to see how they would handle being stuck in the house. I think that's, uh, that's an, uh, that, that would be a fun episode to write. All right, and our last question of this Q&A comes from Megan Harrell. She wants to know, how intentional were all the jokes that went over kids' heads? Like examples, you know, jokes about Alexa technology, misunderstanding humans, grammar jokes, and were these put in just for the parents? And if so, she wants to say thank you. Well, well two things, I think many of the jokes that you think are going over the kids' heads probably aren't. But the truth is, um, Dan's always said that, we, we do these things just to make each other laugh. It's a bunch of people sitting in the room trying to make each other laugh. So we just never take out a joke because we specifically think that the kids might not get it. Um, yeah. It's okay that there's stuff in there for the parents and the grandparents and the older siblings and the aunts and uncles. Um, we leave those in, but I also think the kids get a lot more of them than, than yeah. people think they're going to. And also we try to put in as many jokes as we can so that if the kid doesn't get a joke, they don't have time to get bored. There's another joke coming for them in five seconds. So, so we always try to do that. And, you know, and kids love jokes about the intricacies of grammar. We, we found that that's a lot. Absolutely. Of that's true. <laughs> or as, as I once Intricate said, after we did the the Star Wars crossover episode, kids just love Tom Stoppard references. Yes, exactly. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that was our final question, but um, I just want to remind all the bloggers that Phineas and Ferb, the movie Candace Against the Universe is streaming this Friday on Disney Plus. Um, and Dan and Swampy, I'm gonna let you, and Vincent, I'm gonna let you guys just say uh, goodbye and you know, whatever else you want to say to wrap it up, so. All right. Well, we, we want to thank you for coming and listening to us blather on about this and that, which, <laughs> which, which is our favorite thing to do. And, and thanks for being fans of the show and for watching it with your families and for everybody who supported us all these years, genuinely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to keep doing this job for so long. Yeah, thank you guys for, you know, spending summer with us. This has been really, really fun. It's been a, a lot of a lot of time and love has been put into the show. So I hope everyone loves the movie. And thank you for letting us uh, keep making you guys laugh.